What the hell? Oh my god, why in the world is this door closed? Oh my god. I don't want to get no metal fever welding this galvanized. That's what we're talking about today. Ugh. This week's app question comes from our user, Ale. And Ale wants to know if we have any advice for welding and grinding galvanized steel. Now, from the looks of it, Ale, I think you got it down pat for what it's worth. Those beads are on there. That stuff's pretty solid. You cleaned it up just fine. Put on some cold gab and you're good to go. Let's talk about welding and grinding on galvanized steel. What the heck even is galvanizing? Well, it's the process of taking steel and iron and making it kind of corrosion resistant. Steel and iron, it likes to rust. Well, if you take steel and iron and you dip it in molten pure zinc at about 860 degrees Fahrenheit, of course, you gotta do some prep work before, some pickling and whatnot. But after all that, some metallurgical stuff starts to happen when you pull it back out of that molten pure zinc. Dip your metal into pure zinc. When you get to pulling it out, the oxygen starts to react around it. Some metallurgical stuff starts to disturb its grainy bits and you start forming the zinc oxides over top of that steel. Now this is your first layer of protection for corrosion resistance. And then it goes to reacting with carbon dioxide as well, mixing it up, giving you a little swirly bits of zinc carbonate. And all this together, all this corrosion resistance whenever it starts to form and crystallize makes this a cheaper process so that you don't have any of this rusty stuff. It doesn't rust. How can you tell which one's steel and which one's got galvanized on it? Hot dip galvanized is your most common version of galvanizing steel or iron and it's that dipping process we just talked about. And it gives off these sparkles, sprinkles, sprinkles. I don't know, they call it something, but it's that grain that solidified so quickly that it just got stuck like that. And I think it's awesome. You can go walking around our beautiful planet and see all the galvanized stuff that's out there. And now you know those little different reflections on that pattern. It's the grains of that zinc. And the more it oxides, the more bold it gets and stands off. So you know if something's been sitting out for quite some time. Now, to get this off, you gotta use some form of abrasion. Some stuff is way thicker than others. If you're using a grinder, you can tell that zinc doesn't put off a whole lot of sparks. So when you get down to that heavier spark, you know that you've got the galvanized off and you're down to iron or steel, and it's gonna be a lot easier to weld. There really isn't anything crazy to welding this stuff. It's just mild steel dressed up real fancy for the ball. Really, if it was meant to be welded on, they would have probably welded on it and then dipped it, right? But now that we've got a piece that's dipped and we gotta weld it, you don't wanna be welding over top of this stuff. It welds like crud. If you tried it without it, sometimes you could probably dig through it with some good bolts or amps, but don't do that. You've gotta get the galvanized off. All you gotta do, get it welded, and then once it's done welded, then hit it with some cold galve, and then you're good to go. It may not look as pretty as it did, but again, if it was meant to be welded on, then they would have welded it and then dipped it, or it's a bolt-up connection and assembly. The safety involved is what's really the concern. Welding on this stuff is absolutely gnarly. All that yellow smoke, all that white stuff that's getting burnt off the steel, that's that zinc coating getting vaporized, and it puts off some toxic freaking smoke, guys. You do not want to be breathing in it. It'll cause a lot of problems that we call metal fever. Now this stuff can make you sick to your stomach, man. It make you fire out of both ends. It's unpleasant. You give you the zinc shakes, you'll feel like you've got chills or a fever. It is absolutely terrible. Long-term effects could cause cancer as far as lung and brain and nervous system damage. So again, you wanna stay out of this stuff at all costs. Dodge, bob, weave, whatever you can not to breathe in this smoke. You can easily avoid this stuff by putting on forced ventilation with a fan or whatever kind of extraction systems. You can wear a respirator, making sure that you're not breathing in those toxic fumes. As simple as it may be, just move your head out of the smoke. And if you really want to ensure that you're safe, do all three. Make sure you have all those things so that you're good to go and you don't breathe none of this nasty stuff. As far as grinding on this stuff and blending in your welds, it's basically like welding on steel. That galvanized is tough to weld over top of, even when cleaning it welds like I'm not gonna lie, especially this Unistrut stuff. I usually like to put what I call a trash pass in there and just get it on there, get some of that zinc stuff burnt off and kind of fill in some voids. And then I'll go and clean it up with a grinder and then put some solid welds over top of it. As far as blending those welds down, if that's what it calls for, you're in the clear, man. You can blend it as best as you want, get that weld nice and flat. If you see some imperfections and dots and those aren't acceptable, just dot them up with whatever welding process you're using, fill in those little spots, blend it back down, and you're good to go. Just get it nice and blended in. Now, as far as what I saw in your pictures, man, I'd send that right over to paint. 
or you know whether you got to hit it with the cold galve or get it re-dipped. But I think you're doing just fine as far as welding on this galvanized stuff. Now, I hope that answered your question, brother, and I hope that helped understand galvanizing and zinc and what you need to do to avoid breathing this stuff. As if you have any more questions, be sure to run over to that Weld app, ask me, tag me, Austin Hargett, in those questions, and I'll be more than happy to answer them if someone doesn't already. So, till next week, see you around.